Today our laboratory is going to examine the thermal stratification of lakes. We're going to explore how stratification develops over the summer and then how it starts to weaken and lead to turnover. So we've set up a model lake. And so in front of you, you see the sides of the lake, the surface of the lake. And what you don't realize is for the last several hours, we've had a heat lamp on the surface of the lake warming this lake so it started out completely mixed completely completely uniform at a temperature of about probably six degrees five or six degrees and we put a heat lamp on it for two hours to warm it from the surface and so this essentially simulates a lake that we would expect to find toward july and august here in the temperate regions uh, in which it's been warming over the summer and stratification has developed. Now, if, as you take a look at this lake, you cannot see the thermal stratification. It all looks uniform. If you were here with me in the laboratory, you could run your finger down the surface of the lake and feel it going from warm to much colder as I go toward the bottom of the lake. So we're going to help you see the stratification that occurs. As you'll remember from our class materials, the maximum density of water occurs at a temperature of four degrees centigrade, which is really unusual. For most substances, the maximum density is in its solid form, but water is unique. And so it actually becomes more dense from zero degrees to four degrees and then after four degrees, it becomes less dense. So in this lake, as it warms up, the surface waters are warmer and less dense. And that means just like oil and water, they don't mix as effectively as if they were the same density. And so the lake will become stratified with the surface waters not mixing with the lower waters. And so to help you see this, we're going to add a dye to the lake. We're going to add methylene blue dye and we're going to mix up the lake a little bit to do this we are going to use the wind i'm going to use a hair dryer as my source of the wind but as you'll remember from lectures the wind is the major source of mixing in a lake and causes the lake uh, to become mixed throughout So before taking a sample from the lake, I was just doing a little bit of mixing. So now I'm going to take just a little bit of water from the surface of the lake. I'm going to add some methylene blue dye to this surface water. Now I'm going to try to mix this dye very thoroughly so that it essentially simply stains the water that's at this particular density and temperature. Now I'm going to decant the water into another beaker so that we will leave behind any heavy dye particles in this original beaker. And so now I will gently add this dye back to the surface of the lake.
Now, I will use the wind to mix the upper layer of water that's warmer than the underlying layers. So now you can see the warmer upper layer of the lake separated from the colder, more dense lower portion of the lake. And so you're actually starting to see some of the thermal stratification that occurs in a lake. In the lecture materials, you will remember that we talk about the three strata that develop in a lake as the Epilimnion, which is the upper stratum of less dense water. The metalimnion, which is the stratum in which we see a rapid change in density or temperature with depth. And then the hypolimnion, the lower most dense layer or stratum in the lake. Uh, in this case, because it's colder. And so there would be three different strata in this lake. An upper layer that's uniformly mixed and warm, a transition layer, the metalimnion, and then a uniformly dense and cold hypolimnion. One fourth term, another term that we would find in a stratified lake is a thermocline. And a thermocline is the plane of the maximum change in temperature with depth. And so if we looked at the graph that you will create of temperature in this lake, the thermocline will be that plane in which we are observing the most rapid instantaneous change in temperature with depth. That means that the thermocline will always occur within or inside the metalimnion because that's the stratum where temperature is changing with depth. So we now have a lake that has stratified. It would represent a lake that we would expect to find in summer with warm water, changing temperatures, and then uniformly cold water deep within the lake. Now we're going to take uh, temperature measurements in this lake so that you can complete one of the first portions of your first assignment for this laboratory, and that's developing a temperature profile for this lake. So we're going to use this ruler to represent the depths within the lake, and so we will have increments of depth, and then I will read the temperatures for you, and you will record these. Be sure to record both the depth and the temperature, and you will create uh, an XY graph of the temperature profile of this lake. So the first temperature that we take will be immediately at the surface. And so you would consider this to be the same as zero depth. The surface temperature at zero depth is 27.4 degrees centigrade. At one unit of depth, 
the temperature is still 27.4 degrees centigrade. At two units of depth, the temperature is still 27.4 degrees centigrade. At three units of depth, the temperature is still 27.4 degrees centigrade. At four units of depth, which represents this lower line just below the blue dye, the temperature is 26.1 degrees centigrade. At five units of depth, the temperature is 22.0 degrees centigrade. At six units of depth, the temperature is 18.1 degrees centigrade. At seven units of depth, the temperature is 15.8 degrees centigrade. At eight units of depth, the temperature is 13.8 degrees centigrade. At nine units of depth, the temperature is 13.2 degrees centigrade. At 10 units of depth, the temperature is 12.9 degrees centigrade. At 11 units of depth, the temperature is 12.9 degrees centigrade. And at 12 units of depth, the bottom, the temperature is 12.9 degrees centigrade. 